Really quick video for you here today, just a Cubase tip that I think everybody who uses the software should know about. And it's to do with the retrospective record function of Cubase. Normally the way something like that would work is you'd be press play, you'd be playing along with something, and then you go, oh crap, I forgot to press record. Just played the most brilliant thing I've ever done in my life. And what you can do is just press the retrospective record key command and pull up that information onto your track. And that's been around at Cubase for a long time. And that's a great feature in itself, but what a lot of people don't know is retrospective record is running even when you're not playing the project. And so you think, well, how can that work with your click track? And the thing is it doesn't. So what I wanna do is show you how you can take something you've done with the retrospective record, pull it up, and then fix that with MIDI to the tempo of your project. This would also work for somebody who wants to just come into the studio, play some MIDI down, not have to play to a click track, and then take that and warp the tempo so that that played MIDI now sticks to a tempo of your choice. And of course it's MIDI, so then you can change that as much as you want afterwards. And we do have some features built into Cubase. Like if you go up to project, you can go to tempo detection, and that is a way of calculating tempo on MIDI or audio, and it'll place all these time warp markers along the tempo track. But it kind of works sometimes and doesn't work other times. And what I want to do here is show you the manual way of placing these time warp points at the beginning of bars and beats. And in my opinion, it's always just the best way to do this. And it can go extremely quickly, but you can have it be very precise and not let the software do it for you and choose exactly where beats and bars are supposed to be. So I've already done a video like this for audio. So do go check out that one on audio. I'll put a link to that one in the description, but this is specifically for MIDI and specifically for retrospective record, which at this point we can only do with MIDI anyhow. So this is how a typical problem like this would occur. something nice and you go, oh man, that was, that was really beautiful. And I wasn't pressing record. And this can work for an extremely long period of time. I'm not sure how long retrospective record will work for, but it's just gonna keep storing all of these notes in a little buffer. And if you press shift star, that's the key command for it, you're gonna see all the stuff you just played. So I was messing around before I started filming the video, so there's all of that stuff. And then you can see at the very end, we can see this little chunk, which is what I just played right now. So you get all of this data, and it's just a beautiful thing, because you can sit here and just be workshopping ideas. I can grab that chunk, bring it all the way back to the beginning. We can see that right now my tempo is at 120 beats per minute, and there's a new tap tempo feature in Cubase. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by just figuring out roughly what tempo I was playing at. Start right about here, I'm gonna turn the click off. So, uh, so I'm just gonna tap along with that with the new tap feature. There is no longer the, the old form of beat detection in Cubase. This is the new one and I find it does work nicely as long as you understand a couple things about it. Make sure you set the tap tempo here with this little drop down to set project tempo. And all that's gonna do is set your tempo at the beginning of the project to whatever you start tapping on this little tap button. So I set it to set project tempo and I'm ready to start tapping and the key command is shift space. So all I have to do is start tapping. I'm gonna play along with this and see what we get. So I'll start tapping. Something around 96, 95, something like that. So if I look at my tempo track, which I added here by going right click and add tempo track, there it is right there. So you can see that it's put a little tempo marker for me at the beginning of the project that says 96.5. Let's just change that to 95 and uh, we should be good to start messing around with this. I'm gonna get rid of this other stuff at the beginning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this MIDI information so that my first notes start at around bar two and then we're gonna start using the time warp tool. So this is where it gets fun. We click on the time warp tool and with the time warp tool, all you have to do is start clicking in points and you're gonna lock that moment in time for the notes. The next thing we need to do is find out where the next bar is. So if I listen to this right here. Now we'll really be able to line this up, but if I press play. So 
this is beat one, this is beat two, this is beat three. This is the next bar right here. And we can see it's not lining up. So all I have to do is grab bar three and drag it over. And we're gonna see, and let's turn the snap off by the way. Tur drag it over and now we can move bar three to wherever we want. So it just so happens to give me a tiny little line. We can line that up with bar three. Because I've got my quantized field here set to beat, I can actually grab individual beats. So I can say beat two should be right here. Beat three should be right here, you know, something like that. Or maybe you want to line it up with that MIDI note below it, whatever. But do you see how the notes are just letting the grid be moved around it independently? So in other words, if I move this bar four, and this is the beginning of bar four, this note stays exactly where it is, and but bar four lets me move it around it. Now, make sure you have your time warp tool set to warp grid and not warp grid musical events follow because this track is set to musical time base. That's the default setting for uh, an instrument track. Watch what happens if I also have my warp grid set to musical events follow. So these are now musical events follow because of this one music note. If I grab bar five here, you can see that all the notes come with it which is not helping us at all because we want to define where the beginning of a bar is or where a beat is. We want to say this is beat two and this is beat three. If I grab beat two right here and move it over, you can see it's moving. It's not letting us catch up with it. If I set the warp grid to just warp grid, now I can grab beat two and say, you are right there. Grab beat three, this is one is, is now right there. Grab beat bar five and move it over so this one starts right there. I'm not sure what happened here. I kind of made some mistakes. So this was kind of a mess right here, which we'll clean up afterwards. So let's move that to about some sort of in between these mistakes. This is halfway through the bar and this is bar six. And now I'm just gonna keep going through. And this I think is bar seven. Let's see what happens. sped up my tempo as I was playing freely here. Not good timing at all, but that's fine. And then this one is bar nine. So look at that. My tempo went from 101 to 108 to 123 to 121 to 131. So I was kind of all over the map in terms of my own tempo, but that's okay. That's what this whole process is about. And we'll see that once we lock these MIDI events to these points on the bar line, we can now get rid of all of our little tempo points and every single note will stay and adhere to where it is at bars and beats instead of at a moment in time, in minutes and seconds, and then it will be, sound like I played perfectly on the beat the whole time. So you can go through, do an entire song just like this, but remember that this little window right here is how you're gonna define where you can put these points. And by the way, this works anywhere. I can start right here, I can do it right over top of, of a chunk of information. I can do it way at the bottom, but that's how you're gonna move these little warp points around. And if I set it to beat, now I can see it's letting me do individual. You can see that little preview line of where you're gonna be grabbing. So that's how these little warp markers get dropped in and it confines to this grid. So once we've gone through, chosen where in bars and beats, each one of these notes has, is played to, we can then go and erase them. Really, once you get fast at this, it'll take you five minutes to go through an entire song or you know, a few minutes of MIDI and actually drop in those markers specifically where you want them. Let's listen to this now with the click. That's fine, we're gonna fix this. So now that it's locked to the click track, this is the fun part. This is where we get to get rid of all of these points, but still watch the MIDI stick to each bar that it's been assigned to, basically. So all we have to do on our tempo track, and you can also press Command or Control T to get to the, the full tempo track window. This is kind of a nice way to look at it. You can select all these points and just delete them. I'm just gonna do that from this window right here. So we're gonna to switch to the regular object selection tool and then just get rid of all of these points. I'm gonna draw a box around them, press delete. Now watch the notes. This bar six, these notes are gonna stay at bar six. These notes are gonna stay at bar eight, even though we've just completely changed the tempo. So visually it doesn't look like anything's changed, but now let's listen to these bars that were all kind of a different tempo with the click track on. <laughs> So I 
I could go in here now and I can edit my MIDI. I made one little mistake right here, so let's just get rid of that one and bring this chord over to the bar where it's supposed to start. We could actually go in and we could quantize everything. So now, because I was playing, you know, just simple quarter notes, it's all quantized perfectly. <laughs> Once you've done that, now you're free to work with your MIDI information any way you want. And don't forget things like playing your keys and the pedal, all of that information is going to get moved over and be perfectly timed with the bars and beats if you use this method as well. Hopefully that made sense. If it doesn't, ask me in the comments below and I'll try and clarify anything that was a little bit fuzzy. But thanks so much for watching the video. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, bell, and I'll see you in the next video.